Now, tourism is celebrating 25 years of democracy and youth activism in Soweto. Tomorrow, the tourism minister, the Gauteng premier and others will host a discussion with young people from across this province, Gauteng, to commemorate Youth Month. The month, of course, has been used to commemorate the Soweto uprising to honour the young learners who stood up against the apartheid government on June the 16th, 1976. The dialogue kicks off in the morning tomorrow at the Disofeng Park and restaurant in Soweto to discuss now. We're joined by Tourism Minister Mamaloko Kubai Ngubani. Great to have you with us in studio, Minister. And, and you're relatively new in this portfolio, so, so I'd like to talk to you about a whole range of issues. Um, but let's start with this dialogue tomorrow. What do you hope will come out of that? Look, we're looking at the dialogue. We initiated it from the Department of um, Tourism to say, how do we ensure that young people understand what tourism is about, those who have a sense, um, do they know the opportunities that exist for young people? What are the things that they can do? Those who are involved, obviously to give feedback to us as leadership, to say these are the things that we want you to solve. If it's issues of access to information, it's issues of um, support in terms of our incentive. So we'd want to hear feedback from those who are already in the sector and those who are already looking to enter, who are entrepreneurs, obviously, because there are many opportunities, but as part of promoting tourism in township, because some people believe that we only go to the most advanced hotels, we support them while they're very important for us, but we also want to balance and make sure that everybody can play a role. Uh, and I think this is increasingly being talked about, township tourism, uh, B&Bs, people being immersed uh, in, in, in a different culture, in, a, in a, a different part away from those Santon hotels. From where you sit, what are the opportunities for young people? There are quite a number of opportunities, starting from um, B&Bs, backpacking, where you can be able to create, I mean, the, the, the vast things, tour guides, um, being tour guides to be able to tell a story, because you don't want other people to be able to tell your stories. Let's take an example, when you look at the heritage route in terms of you, June 16, which Soweto was one of the catalysts, you would want Sowetans to be able to tell about how that happened, taking the people who are coming to visit to say, this is why it happened and wait and it, uh, you mm. take them the route until Hector Peterson Memorial. But secondly, when you visit, what are the food that you can have? You look at Villa Gazi, you would want to say when the tourists arrive, they can experience that life, Kasi life, because they don't want to come from London and they experience London. Mm. They, they want, want to come to South Africa, they want authenticity and they want real experience. So you have to be able to give it to them in the manner that South Africans we are known to be. But we are one of the hospital, hosp hospitable countries where we are friendly, we are welcoming, and people feel at home when they're here. Uh, I haven't been lately, but I think that area around Vilakazi Street is great um, and, and so welcoming. But uh, Hector Peterson, uh, I know tourists who came in recently who went to view that specifically mm -hmm. uh, and, and said the TVs weren't working, um, uh, things like that. It looked uh, a bit in disrepair. If, if we really care about June the 16th, are, are we looking at things like that? And I, I'm not sure exactly uh, the nick it's in right now. No, we always pay attention to those, especially because those, we call them experiences of our tourists. Sometimes it's not within our ambit, but where we think it impacts on the experience, we come in as the Department of Tourism to help in solving that experience. Because so when we you don't care want, about that museum? I would care about that museum yeah. because it's very critical for us because the experiences that people come and take, because we're telling a story about South Africa and the Youth, um, youth Month, how we came to celebrate in the Youth Month, why we have June 16 in South Africa. It's a story. It's about heritage tourism. Now, when something like that, we do come in as the department and help solve it, obviously in partnership with the Department of Arts and Culture and whoever is the custodian or the holder, because various areas are not under us, but we are responsible for tourism. Mm. So you'd find we have a heritage site. Let's take uh, Robben Island. It's under Department of Arts and Culture. But if there are issues that tourists give us a feedback to say this is what we didn't like about the experience, can we enhance? 
we get in to talk to our partners and see best collaborating to solve that problem. Okay, so you care about the experience of the individual tourists yes, who arrives I, in South Africa, basically. Definitely. And you mentioned BNBs, and and I want to ask you because we're, we're thinking about regulating Airbnb, which which is this global system that seems to be working very well, and South Africans are hooking in on mass. Uh, what do you think about that? We're not regulating Airbnb. We're regulating the staying in the houses because part of the responsibility we have, as I talk about the experience, if we can make sure that the experience that a tourist have is quality and when that person leaves, because if the person leaves with a bad taste, then they damage the brand South Africa. So it's no longer about this one place that this person stayed. It's about South African hospitality. So we're wanting to make sure that the standards are of high quality and it's what we can experience. I always made an example. Isn't it I a self-standardizing global internet system? No, let me make an example. I went and stayed in one house in Grahamstown. The house is under PNP, and then the person that owns stays in. Yeah. Now, while I was there, staying in the house, the dogs were running around making noise, I couldn't sleep, but as well, the inappropriate behavior of the host, uh, the host at that time was something else. So we had to give feedback to say, this can't work. So it's those things that worries us. Mm. The safety of the people who come, the standard, but equally, you don't want to kill a formal market. So there are issues that we have to be able to say, can we make sure that they still, because we're not cutting them out. We are saying from the bill, the bill says we are going to minimize the number. We put a threshold. If it's free stay in a house, this is the number of hours or yeah. number of days you can stay. But if you pass this, then register as a formal business so that you can be able to meet certain standards. We are also, as the Department of Tourism, responsible for grading because it's part of what we want to make sure that there is quality in the service yeah. that we provide. Is this not an intervention in a, in a free market where tourists rate the places they stay in? If, if I want to go to Italy and stay in one place for three weeks, why okay. can't I? Why can't tourists come to South Africa and choose where they want to spend their time and how long? They will still be able to choose. Because if you look global, that's what actually is done globally with what we are doing. We benchmarked, we looked at how many, which countries are already implementing what we want. Because we saw it was a common thing and we received complaints. And we said, okay, let's go back, let's benchmark. I've looked at the report of the benchmarking mm -hmm. across the globe. There is that standard of making sure that we manage the number of days in, and most of the time they're not exceeded. But you just want to make sure that there's quality, there's experience, good quality of experiences, people that experience. So it's, it's not a phenomenon that is happening only in South Africa, it's globally. What we are doing is not what is not done in Europe, for example. Europe has implemented what we are trying to do right okay. now. Let's look at the bigger picture. The president recently talking about this goal of doubling tourist arrivals to 21 million by 2030. So, yes. so that's on your plate. That's my target. How, how are you going to tackle that? It's actually that? It's not double because if you look at currently the, the tourists that we arrive, arrive in the country, it's, we're looking at 10 million. So it's more it's than 50%. Yeah. We're we looking at various campaigns in the coming weeks. I will be announcing campaigns that we'll be doing. We believe that we have to be aggressive. When you want to double or more than doubling your amount of tourism, uh, and the target, because I have no option but to meet that target that I, it has been said. Mm. It's my scorecard. Is it meetable? It is country? meetable. It is meetable. We've looked at the various markets. Uh, we're looking at the Asian market, for example. It's very much potential. We are listening to them to say what are the issues, why it concerns them, why they are not coming to South Africa, and we are resolving those issues. One of the issues that, for example, Chinese market are worried about coming to South Africa. They're not used to paying with cash. They use like your Alipay, they use cell phones, yeah. your WeChat to pay for services. Now we're looking at partners who has a response to be able to respond to something like that, be able to pay, uh, allow them to pay without um, using cash or card. Yeah. So those are the things that are enablers. So we look at partnership. You go to... Uh, and you look at the issue of um, e-visa that Minister Mutualeji has announced. I'm very excited about it because that will be an enabler for us to be able to receive 
quite a number of tourists because what we are getting as feedback is that the process, the manual process that is currently in place make, becomes an, inhib an, an inhibitor mm. for tourists because you have to go to the offices, they take your passport for many days, you know, and we look at, time. you know, we travel this, time. Yeah. And for business tourists, they don't have time. There are people who do not have that luxury of giving you their passport for three weeks. You, you so you can't do it. So that's why the e-visa system responds positively and will assist us to be aggressive in what we do. And I will be doing the road shows as well to meeting with the people who are organizing these travels. Personally, as a minister, from a leadership point of view, to say, we are here, we are listening to you. Your, your predecessor was suggesting at, at one point that the unabridged um, birth certificate, the whole issue of, of traveling with young people, was decimating our, our tourism. Is that issue behind us? That issue is long behind us. Last year, already after the discussion and um, decision by cabinet, it was resolved, published. I've verified when I got into the portfolio, talked to the people who are in the industry to understand that does it still become an issue? And I've received feedback that it's no longer an issue. It's published on the websites and people know that um, it's not a requirement. Final question. You, you said that uh, Asian uh, tourists have raised issues. Is crime there? And, and what do you do as tourism minister about what, what could be one of the biggest deterrents given the, the press we receive overseas? Look, with the issue of crime, one, it's two ways. Yes, it's coming up, but again, in we do benchmarking and you know sometimes it helps to have moved from one portfolio to the other now we're waiting we're working on the based on the research we are going to launch the safety campaign in the country to be able to respond to that but one of the issues is to be able to say how do we ensure that there's responsible reporting and in this i'm in no way saying journalists must not report yeah. but sometimes we report in such a manner that we exaggerate things one incident happened which mm -hmm. happens like in but how anywhere. How do you control global uh, reporters? You know, it's global. Yeah, no, no, it's global. Normally, mm -hmm. it's not global reporters that are actually reporting on most of the South African. They are feeded from South African reporting, but we'll have that conversation and also get suggestion from our media houses. We'll have a conversation with editors to say, tell us what is it that we can do to improve the brand yeah. South Africa, so, how we report, how we also conduct ourselves as political leadership and the leadership, how we response time. But one of the things that we've done as the portfolio is to be able to have a response time that is quick and support if there's an incident. All right. Well, we will follow your efforts to more than double uh, tourist arrivals. Thank you for your time this evening. That was uh, Tourism Minister Mamaloko Kubai Ngubani. We take a short break. Full view continues. We're explorers. We all.